Did you know that Bordeaux produces 22 million litres of wine each year? Join us while we drink a couple of litres ourselves. We're just at wine tasting number one in Bordeaux. We're self-driving today. We just arrived, so we've got a wine and cheese pairing. We're at Chateau de Sales and it is beautiful. Number one of how many? How many did we count? Was it 13? Including France? I lost track. I got shot a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Chateau Cantignac. It is our second wine tasting and our first day in Bordeaux. Pretty excited because the first one was very amazing and now I have high expectations. <laughs> yeah, the first one was great, wasn't it? Yeah. It was unique. What did they, they did, we did like some sniffing of some scents. Yeah, we got to sniff scents um, and like try each of the different flavors that a wine might bring out isolated. So we had like a salty water, a bit of tea, um, a really sour lemon juice and different types of cheese, some really salty, some a bit more aged and chalky with and see how they interacted with the wine. It was really interesting and unique. Bordeaux is a captivating city nestled in the heart of southwestern France. Known as the wine capital of the world, Bordeaux is a hotspot for wine enthusiasts and foodies. Its picturesque setting with the Garonne River winding through the city provides a stunning backdrop for this city that is dubbed as the little Paris of France. With its historic centre being a UNESCO World Heritage Site, Bordeaux is a great city to wander through and take a break from wine tastings. The restaurant terraces were buzzing and it felt like every Bordeaux local came out for a 5pm wine. We loved our time here and it was a great central base for our Bordeaux adventure. After exploring some wineries on our own on the first day, we decided to join a small group wine tour for our next adventure. This tour was fantastic and included a variety of wineries and a lovely picnic lunch. Our favourite stop on the tour though was Chateau Carboneau. This is one of the oldest and largest wine estates in the Bordeaux region, with a history extending over eight centuries, and in 1786 was even visited by the future US President Thomas Jefferson, who planted a pecan tree in the gardens which still proudly stands today. The wines here were outstanding and we couldn't help but buy a few bottles to take home with us and the grounds of some of the most beautiful that we saw in all of Bordeaux. After visiting some beautiful wineries, our next stop on our wine tour was the beautiful town of Saint-Emilion. Saint-Emilion has an impressive history with roots all the way back to prehistoric times. The village gained prominence in the 8th century when a hermit named Emilion settled in the area, attracting pilgrims and establishing a monastic community that would then go on to develop the region's famous vineyards. As we wandered through the village's cobblestone streets, we were enchanted by Saint-Emilion's medieval charm. We enjoyed the well-preserved buildings and historic monuments, including the awe-inspiring monolithic church carved out of limestone rock at the centre of the village. We definitely recommend stopping by between your wine tastings. With a long history dating back to 1252, when the first harvest took place, Chateau Pape Clement takes its name from the previous owner, who was Pope Clement V. This added religious element to the winery was extremely fascinating, with many church and papal items shown throughout the estate and the vineyards. The property is also an active hotel, with a wedding being hosted on the grounds during our visit. Grace was green with envy, as we couldn't imagine a more perfect wedding venue than this absurdly beautiful and grand estate. The wines as well were equally as impressive as the property, and we look forward to opening our newly acquired bottle after 15 to 20 years of cellaring. Our final stop of the day was Chateau Haute Brion. Chateau Le Carmes Haute Brion is one of the closest vineyards to Bordeaux city. This winery is a beautiful juxtaposition with the contrast of the lush vineyards and the grand estate which dates back to the 1600s. We thoroughly enjoyed our private tour through this estate and learning about the winemaking process as well as the estate's commitment to sustainable practices. You certainly won't regret visiting this winery, so make the short trip from the city and go check it out. Next up, we left the city and checked into a wine and wellness retreat that was right among the vineyards of Bordeaux called Les Sources de Cordelie. This unique hotel had a beautiful rustic feel which was combined with modern comforts providing a true five-star experience. The on-site spa is inspired by the concept of venotherapy and offers a range of treatments based on the beneficial properties of grapes and vines. 
We also enjoyed both on-site restaurants, splurging on a degustation meal at their two Michelin star venue, La Grande Vanne. Chateau Smith Haut Lafitte was affiliated with our hotel and was just across the road, so we decided to pop our head in for a visit. While the winery offers tours, you are free to wander the grounds and taste some wine in the wine shop without a booking. The origins of the chateau can be traced all the way back to the 14th century, when the property was first established as a noble house. Over the centuries, Chateau Smith Haut Lafitte has continued to improve its reputation and has become one of the leading producers in the Bordeaux region. We spent a perfect hour here enjoying the lush gardens and the wine terrace. We had such an incredible time. Bordeaux's vibrant vineyards, stunning chateaus and incredible wine offer an epic journey that captures the irresistible allure of French wine culture. We are leaving full of good wine and good food with our bags a little bit heavier carrying some special bottles to enjoy back home.